Hi, I'm Evan Crawley. And I'm Travis Lazarczyk. And today we're at Coney High School, where Evan, the Rams are getting ready for a playoff game against PTCB rival Lawrence. It really wasn't much of a game in the regular season with Coney taking a 30-13 to win at Kai's Field in Fairfield. That's right, Travis. Uh, the game was originally scheduled for Friday night. This is going to be played Saturday afternoon right. at 1 p.m. now. Uh, that was the first game where Coney started to figure out their defense. Early in the year, they had a ton of problems uh, stopping anyone. They gave up 46 points to Brewer. They gave up 52 to Brunswick. And that was the first game where they really started to figure things out. Uh, they moved in Benaya Wilhoit to the defensive, lo uh, defensive line. Uh, Max Story moved in at linebacker. They added some new pieces. They started to figure out uh, exactly what they have for talent. And uh, it, very, it really showed in that Lawrence game, Travis. Yeah, it was the start of a long winning streak for Coney. Now, Lawrence has had a pretty good season too. They've only had those hiccups to Coney and then to uh, Brunswick a few weeks later. Uh, Bulldogs coming off an impressive 34-14 win over a much improved Brewer team last week in the playoffs. Uh, big thing defensively for Lawrence all season has been pass defense. They kind of struggled with that with Coney last game. Coach John Hurston said, look, Coney quarterback Mitchell Karen just made a lot of great throws. We thought the guy was covered and he just put it in there. So he's really stressed to his team this week. If, even if you're playing tight, just be ready that the kid can make the pass. And uh, with the receivers like Taylor Carrier for the Rams, um, maybe expect some more of that. Uh, the Rams are getting ready for this game, obviously, and recently we caught up with Coach Rabbi Vashon and a couple of the guys on the team. That Lawrence game was a turning point for you guys. What were some of the personnel changes you guys made uh, from that game and going forward? Uh, defensive end has been huge for us. That's the first night that Benaya played for us, Benaya Will Hoyt. And, uh, you know, he's a tremendous athlete, and he showed it that night as well. And he was really physical with powers, and I thought he did a nice job in contain. Um, we also changed the linebacker spot a little bit. Max Story started to get some reps at linebacker for us, and he's been pretty critical for us also. Uh, we don't start a lot of two-way guys, so I think we've been pretty fresh on the defensive line. Uh, all four of them are one-way players, uh, so I, I think that's helped us also. Uh, what do you have to do to get a win against Lawrence? You can't turn the football over. You know, I mean, the more chances they get offensively, they're extremely dangerous. Their skill kids are very athletic. Uh, defensively, they rally to the ball. Uh, so I, I think we've got to protect the football and uh, just do what we do. Uh, that Lawrence game was really where things changed for you guys. What what happened uh, up at Kai's Field? Uh, well, we we really just got like amped up from all the like the parade they had and just the atmosphere. I mean, we just we wanted it, you know. Like they did too, but we capitalized and got the outcome. What do you guys need to do to slow down Lawrence? Uh, I think we gotta just stop the run game pretty much. I mean, they. The running back is hurt, but they still got they got plenty of other kids that can do it. Uh, Anthony, coach was saying you guys had a good week, of, uh, good day of practice on Tuesday up at uh, up at Thomas. What do you feel like you accomplished? Well, first of all, we kind of were very fast with everything, going through everything. Um, I felt like we knew exactly what we were doing with all of our um, routes and everything, and on defense coverages seemed really nice and just everything was all tightened up and everything. On the other side of the PTCB, uh, Meselonski will travel to Brunswick in a 4-1 game, and but Meselonski is the only team to beat Brunswick this year uh, in the PTCB, Travis. Yeah, the only team from the PTCB in the regular season to beat Brunswick in the last two seasons. Spoiled the uh, undefeated regular season each year for the Dragons. Uh, probably the two best running teams in the PTCB, so we might have a quick game where actually it's just kind of everybody's going at each other on the ground. Um, we're both running games should be strong. Uh, both defenses are strong. Look for probably a low-scoring game in that one. Yep. Uh, and then over in Class C, Winslow and Waterville are both in action after having buys last week. Yep. Winslow, the number one seed, undefeated in the region, hosts Belfast. Of course, in the regular season, they beat Belfast 62-6 to down in Belfast. Coach Mike Savisky says, hey, it's a whole new season. Belfast has a strong running game led by Stephen Davis, so we're not taking anything for granted. Winslow has a strong offense led by running back Dylan Hapworth, the quarterback Bobby Chouinard, receiver Justin Martin. So that should be a decent one. Another rematch is Waterville in the number two seed hosting number three Foxcroft Academy. This is a rematch of the first uh, game of the regular season for both teams. Foxcroft's changed a lot since then. Hunter Smith moved from wide receiver to quarterback and has really kind of given a spark to the Ponies offense. Between him and Peter Boyer, they really run, run the ball well. Waterville, another strong running team with Cam Thomas and Dan Pooler, so it should be a good game at Drummond Field in Waterville on Saturday afternoon. Over in Western Class D, uh, it was all chalk there. Old Orchard Beach survives a game against Winthrop Monmouth, and they'll travel to take on top-seeded Lisbon, while uh, Oak Hill gets a rematch with Durgo. Durgo, the only team to beat 
Oak Hill during the regular season. They won 13 to six. It was also the game where uh, starting linebacker and running back Kyle Flaherty was hurt. Uh, he missed a bunch of time during the season he was with a hamstring injury, Travis. And uh, but talking with Stacey Doucette last night, the uh, the Raiders coach, he said Flaherty is is back. He's 100 percent, and their offense is really different uh, and much more explosive with both him and Mace in the lineup. Another team that's kind of getting a boost from a returning running back is uh, Maine Central Institute, MCI, in the Little Ten Conference in Eastern D. Uh, MCI played about half the season without star running back Jonathan Santiago, who led the league in rushing last year and was on pace to do that again this year until he tweaked the knee injury that he suffered in basketball season last winter. Uh, he should be back for the Huskies when they host the number four Matt Knock Cook on Friday night at Colby College, not at MCI's Pittsfield campus. The game's going to be at Colby College on the turf. Um, and Eric Hathaway, fullback defensive tackle for MCI should be back to uh, MCI is 8-0 and, and I looked it up today this is the first time they've been the number one seed in the LTC playoffs in the history of their program since joining the league in 1977. Pretty impressive stuff Travis and for all the results from these games and much more please log on to centralmain.com and please be sure to pick up the Kennebec Journal and Morning Sentinel newspapers. That's it for us this week we'll talk to you next week about regional finals enjoy whatever games you get out to and we'll see you next time on Gridiron Group.